faith would arise in your people in Jesus' name. God, I just ask that you would fill us with faith, God, that draws on the anointing of God. And Lord, that you would do a mighty work in this place, and God, that you would open us up to receive it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I searched the world, it couldn't fill me. Men's empty praise and treasures that fail, never know. You came along, you put me back.
Just a name we throw around Cause your soul's power More than just a fate to talk about And forget Monday morning Oh my soul, don't you forget Of the days you never left you What makes you think that what comes next He's not holding to oh. So good to remind us that this is your story. You're so good to remind us. You're the Alpha, Omega, beginning and the end. There's no God beside you. All He's so good. 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 He's so good.
good. He's so good. He's so good. Yes, he is. Oh, oh, oh. You are good. It is your name. God, we give you great praise. We give you thanksgiving, Father. We exalt you, Jesus, in this house tonight. Let's continue to praise him and worship him and give him all the glory for everything that came in your life this week, good or bad, character building or a mountaintop of praise and and good news. Let's just praise him in everything. And God, we praise you. You are worthy to be praised. We honor you, Jesus. We exalt you. We magnify you. Thank you, Jesus. God, we are humbled to be able to host your presence in this place. Father, I thank you that the Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Jesus, we feel your presence. And we thank you for the manifestation to increase with every part of this service. Holy Spirit, have your way. For we want to be led by you, not our own agendas. God, I thank you as you pre prepare all of us in the different parts of this service, whatever part we are in, Lord, that we are obedient and quick to listen to what you want to share, what you want to pray, and what you want to talk about. Thank you, Jesus, for preparing Pastor Ken as he comes very soon to share what God has placed on his heart. Lord, I thank you for the testimonies that are going to be in this house tonight. Lord, we are part of a church that goes through so many wonderful times of the Holy Spirit being present in our services and in our conferences. And there's been glory in this room and in this house for the last week. I know last week we started out by saying, let's occupy and let's prepare this house for what was coming. And then we had our CGIA, Church Growth Internationals of America, and we had pastors and apostles and teachers and evangelists come from all over the place. We were so blessed by the wisdom that they shared, the anointings that they brought, and the, the ordination of the, of the people, of the servants of Christ Jesus that said, here I am, Lord, use me. We had so many ordinations of new ministry that took place right here in these altars because all it took was obedience stepping forth in faith and saying, yes, Lord, I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what it sounds like, but I trust you with all my heart. I lean not on my own understanding, but in all ways, acknowledge you, Jesus. God, we are so, so grateful for all the miracles, signs, and wonders that even took place over the last few days. God, even the turnarounds that took place, we prayed for divine reversal over situations, over court cases, over people who were battling diseases or illnesses, or even in the hospital. And we stood and we, we, we were steadfast in our faith. But first we were believing God. As we believe tonight, Lord, that you are not done. You're just getting started. God, I thank you for all the miracle signs and wonders that will take place tonight. Father, you know the hearts of the people here. God, I thank you that you even speak to them now to, to ask, seek, and knock, and not to refrain from what you are speaking to them, but to come boldly before the grace, the throne of grace, God, that we can come into the courts of heaven and present our prayers, present the cases that the enemy has placed on us or against our families. 
And God, we can take authority because you have given us dominion through the Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you right now for even those people that we know are in hospital beds, Lord, that they are battling being scared, not knowing what's coming next because words have been spoken over them. There's been reports spoken over them. God, we take authority over those reports. And we say, Father, we listen to you, Lord, for you are Jehovah Rapha, our healer and our great physician. And Lord, I thank you that you are going to those bedsides and you're speaking a word of comfort and mercy and grace. And God, that they know that they have experienced the Almighty Father. God, I thank you that you are bringing them peace where they they have chaos going on in their mind, that you are transforming their, their minds with the truths that will set them free. Lord, I thank you that those people who are lonely, who may not have family or anyone to come visit them, God, they have you, Abba, Father, that can come. All they have to do is say, Father, I need you. Father, I can't do this on my own strength, but I know you can be my strength. God, I thank you that they are humble and that they ask, seek, and knock for your presence, for the miracle healing power that only you can provide when they believe and have faith and receive it in the name of Jesus. God, you place in my heart that we go to bat and we travail, we intercede, and we pray for our children, God. That is what you placed in my heart so passionately. And as I look around, I see children in our, in our house tonight, and God, we give you glory for them. Lord, we even heard of a wonderful birth of a new member of, of Evangel, and Katie and Chris Cervantes received their new baby boy today. So we praise you and we thank you, Lord, for his birth. God, we thank you, Lord, that the enemy had no authority or power over that little boy, God. We thank you for the anointing upon his life. And God, that you brought him forth into this world to make a difference. That we know there's no junior Holy Spirit, but that he is filled because of the parents that he has been entrusted to. Because they are faithful parents. Because they speak the word of God. Because they pray over their children. And they declare and decree the promises of yes and amen. So Father, we thank you for the new births, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that there's more to come, that there'll be multiplication in the hospitals all over the world because the enemy has no power. And God, I thank you that you multiply, that you increase, God, the children. Lord, bringing people, even births of multiple twins and triplets and quadruplets to supersede what the enemies tried to do. God, I thank you that that's happening right now. God, I thank you that you place a desire in people's hearts that they want to have children, God, that they want to be able to, to be parents and teach them and train them up in the way that they should go. So when they're old, they do not depart from it. So Father, we take authority right now over all the sons and daughters who were raised up that way. They were trained up that way in the ways of the Word and the Lord and that they do not depart from it. So Father, speak to them now wherever they are. Bring them back into the fold of the shepherd. Bring them back into the house, God, that speaks the truth, the Word of God, Lord. Stir up the desire in their in their spirits, God, that they want to learn about you. They want to know you, God. They want to, they want to hear your voice, God. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Father, that you say, bring all the little ones to me. We bless those little ones, God. We bless them with great favor, with the gifts. God, raise them up to be daughters and sons and princesses and princes for your glory. We thank you, Jesus, for all that you're doing, God. We thank you, Father, that you continue to burn in us. God, 
reignite the flame in us so that we do not become lukewarm. God, bring a hunger in us so that we have a flame of fire for you, God. Lord, bring people into our pathway so that we can speak to them about who you are and, and what you say about them. Lord, I thank you that you quicken our hearts for the people who are on the streets, who are homeless, broken, lost, scared. Let us roll our windows down, God. Let us see them with your eyes and, and hear what you want to say to them. Even if you just tell them that Jesus loves you and speak favor and life into them. We come against the spirit of death. The spirit of isolation, you must go now in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for the families here. As you're restoring families, God, you're restoring the spirit of unity in our families, God. I thank you, Lord, that you're healing relationships. Thank you, Father. You're healing marriages, God. I thank you for that. Lord, we give you praise and glory for you're such a good, good Father. Just as our wonderful worship team ushered in the presence of the Holy Spirit tonight, declaring and decreeing those truths. And I pray that you are speaking and singing those to yourself and over your circumstances. Because we have a great, great Father. He is absolutely good. And we give him all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Go ahead and have a seat. Deanna's going to lead us in communion. For communion today, I'm going to talk about spiritual warfare. And I know that we have all have experienced spiritual warfare as believers. So starting in Luke 10, 19 and 20, it says... Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. No matter what we as believers go through, we are blessed, to com we are blessed coming in and blessed going out. And we have ultimate victory because of what Jesus did on the cross. Uh, this week on my job, I dealt with some spiritual warfare and it was just coming at me left and right. And I was just, I just felt criticized and just really annoyed. And um, so I shared it, the situation with the Lolas and uh, Pastor Tina reminded me the authority that I have because I am a daughter of the King. And she told me before I walk into work every day to say these things. I have authority over the enemy. I am the salt of the earth. I am the light of the world. I am the city on the hill. And as I began to speak these things over my life, I began to feel it and believe it. And um, I just felt light and, and joyful. And even though there was still chaos going on around me, it bounced right off and it didn't affect me emotionally at all. So when, when people have um, wicked spirits, such as, for example, uh, witchcraft spirit or the Jezebel spirit, it not only tries to hurt you, um, it tries to hurt you, but it doesn't succeed, but it damages the person carrying that spirit. And because we see in the spiritual realm and we have discernment enough um, to see the bigger picture, we know to pray for that person because what really matters at the end of the day is their soul. Uh, Ephesians 6.12 it says, for we wrestle against, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It's not the people, it's the spirit. Jesus came to save us. He came to give us power and authority by the act of love that he showed on the cross. Psalm 105.15 says, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. You and I are anointed. And we belong to God and he's our protector and he's our watcher and he's our helper and nothing can touch us. 
So the last verse I'm gonna read is in Revelation 1.18. It says, I am he who lives and was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. So as I pray over the communion, I want us to have gratitude for what he did on the cross. I want us to be joyful because our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. So you can get your elements ready. God, I thank you for having the entire world in your heart when you sent your son. Lord, we thank you for the authority you have given us over these spirits and over the, the wickedness in this world. And God, we are so thankful that you have prepared a place for us in heaven. You are the creator of all and everything points to you. God, we honor you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. It's offering time. Yeah, that works. Um, so um, I was told before I came up here, before even the service started. So ties, uh, ties are what is ten percent of your income, um, or what you make to the church. And then if you want to make an offering, that would be payable to young adults, right? Catalyst young adults on the envelope so just so they know what is a tithe and what's an offering so um for today's offering message um i, I was you know my my dad asked me last night um if i could do offering sorry to throw you under the bus but you did um he asked me last night and he said um can you do offering so this morning i woke up and i you know prepared a message i usually you know wake up read my bible and pray everything but I woke up and I was trying to, you know, um, have an offering message just, you know, spoken to me by God. I was like, God, what do you want to say tonight and stuff? And so um, I started to think, you know, and I believe God was telling me, God doesn't need, you know, our money, but, but we need discipline. He didn't, you know, put an offering because he needs our money, because he needs that to, to advance his kingdom. But in that giving of, of what? sometimes we think is a value that's what god needs god god wants our faith our faithfulness and our faith to be overflowing and abundantly that's what moves the kingdom of god not you know the value of money so um and an understanding understanding weekly sometimes daily that money is not the value that the wor the world puts on it that he wants the giving of your flesh in an act of faith God knew money would be something humans held in such high regard. There's a lot of things that God made for good that we, you know, uh, culture, whatever it is, turns, you know, and tries to say it's it's good, but it's actually, for, they use it for evil. Um, because he knew we were sinners from the beginning. You go back to Adam and Eve and go back to uh, with one bad seed planted in Eve's head. Uh, by the serpent, turn them into falling into sin and being kicked out of the garden. And how God knew that was, that was you know, a thing from day one that we knew we would be by something uh, of a serpent by saying, you know, whatever it is. And I believe that culture is that serpent in today's world. Social media, sometimes even friendships. All around us, we see all the time money being flaunted or objects or material, materialistic things being held in such high regard the question is are we going to be able to have the faith and pray and what looks like sometimes and i feel this in my life sometimes what looks like we're just sometimes looking at a wall and there's nothing there in the physical realm but in the spiritual realm we can see the presence of god all around us and so that's just something i want to ask you is that you know not so much of your money but god wants your discipline god wants your heart and money's just a thing that the world that he knew we would value from the beginning it's hard but those acts of faith are just like offering and god give giving you this opportunity today to give so i just like to pray for the offering lord i thank you god for this moment father i thank you lord for the message you've given me god i ask lord that 
this these words that you've given me, Father, would just, you know, fall on good ground, Father, as your offering does, Lord. Lord, I thank you for everybody here today. God, may you just show them financial blessing, Lord, that they'd be able to give more than they ever gave before and show them the meaning of offering, Father, that it's not so much, God, that we give something to you, God, but we, you take something from ourselves, Father, that we, we, we are sacrificing what maybe looks good in the natural, Father, for a spiritual faith and a, and a childlike faith for you, God. I thank you, Lord, that Everybody here gives gracefully and, um, uh, a good offering, Father. God, you, you said that, um, that an offering is what moves a man's faith and heart, Father. So I thank you, Lord, that you are just moving our hearts and our faith today, Father, to give generously to you, God. And I ask, Lord, that as we give this offering, that it would just be a blessing to us, Father. And that it would not be taking away from us, but it would be giving to us back tenfold. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So the usher should be coming around with the buckets. And then I believe ENN is next. Close. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. Elijah hand for that. He did a good job. Thank you, Elijah. And if you have if you have an offering, come on forward with your offering and God bless you as you do. Guillermo Maldonado uh, said, he said many amazing things while he was here. Um, but he said, you live, you live out of what you give. Powerful statement. You live out of what you give. The power of generosity. It is better to give than it is to receive. It's better for us to give than it is receive. So thank you, uh, Elijah, for that message and the opportunity we have. Lord, I thank you to give. No live ENN today, so I'm going to read you what's coming up. Uh, September 22nd uh, on Thursday, there's family prayer night here at 6 p.m. Uh, and then a speeder's luncheon, September 21st at noon. It doesn't look like anybody is old enough here for the speeder's luncheon, but I'll just announce it. Mike Campbell, October 1st and 2nd. Has anybody seen Mike Campbell before? Uh, principles, financial principles, really, really good. Um, all Sunday services, first and second, um, and it will be on financial prosperity. Last time he came, blessed us tremendously, so I would highly recommend, if you have a desire to learn uh, wisdom, understanding, knowledge about finances and prosperity, come see him on the first and second for sure. Jesse Duplantis, Tyler's favorite. We say it every time I mention it. October 23rd at 5 p.m. Um, that's a Sunday evening, I believe. Get here early because Jesse packs the house. And then there's uh, Hallelujah Night. Uh, Hallelujah Night is Heartbreak Hotel. Did anybody see Heartbreak Hotel last year? Yeah, it was, it was, I remember it well. It was uh, impressionable, October 30th, that is. And uh, those are the announcements. Uh, again, want to announce that Chris and uh, Katie Cervantes, uh, baby boy today, we were trying to weigh in on the name, baby boy, and we, were, uh, we gave our suggestions. They still haven't named him yet. Um, so, uh, if you have suggestions and you have, uh, Chris or Katie's, uh, number, feel free, uh, to let them know biblical names I suggested, but, uh, um, we're, we're so happy for them. Beautiful baby boy. What greatest miracle in the world. In addition to Haven, they have, um, Katie's doing well, but man, uh, what a, what a great, um, how awesome it is. Tina was speaking into that. How, how many uh, were here for any part of CGIA? And raise your hand. Have, have a number of us that were here. And uh, starting on, on Sunday, it was such a powerful conference. Uh, Sunday, we got to hear, um, um, we, well, it was, it was uh, Gibson, um, Yeah, Horvath and also, 
I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, um, I got ahead of myself. So it was, it was Rachel on Sunday. Pastor Rachel was on Sunday, and she did an amazing job. And uh, there was a, a painting illustration as well that um, Ashlyn did that was incredible. She, um, in fact, because of that, um, Gustavo saw it online and, and invited her to do the same thing down in Colombia. Um, at, at their services down there. It was, it was powerful. Not only the preaching that, that Rachel did was incredible, but along with the painting and, and the, um, the power of that that came through, it was an incredible Sunday evening. And then uh, we had uh, Brian Gibson. And um, um, who was with Brian on Monday morning? Yeah. Voister. Uh, Brian Gibson and Voister both were were really good, and then uh, Guillermo Guillermo Maldonado, who was here on either Monday or Tuesday uh, evening, so so good. Now, in the middle of that, squeezing in, Miss Tina mentioned that there was uh, ordination, and we had a, a number of people uh, ordained um, while they were here. So we would like to have the people that were ordained, come on up, that were ordained, come on up, come on up and give them a hand. So Melissa Karma here is, um, she and her husband Rex were ordained. Rex, a good friend of mine, they're good uh, friends of our family. Rex was the, the tennis coach at the University of Louisville for um, uh, more years than probably I remember, about 30, right? Is that 29. about 29? I was close, uh, 29 years. Could you just say a few words about the ordination and what that meant for, for you and Rex? Um, really, the ordination for us was kind of like a culmination of just years of the Holy Spirit just stirring a heart um, for ministry and many different prophetic words that have been spoken over our lives. And during the ordination, I felt like a lot of confirmation came forth um, that we were embarking on a new season. Um, we've been in probably about a three, I'd say about a three year preparation period where the Lord's really just pulled us away and just really um, poured into us, healed us, spoken um, spoken to us, just a ministry of the secret place. Um, and we know that everything that is life that comes from God comes from that secret place. And so I feel like um, the Lord is showing us that there's new things on the horizon. And, you know, we don't know exactly what that entails, but our hearts are open to just step out and let him use our lives to touch others for the glory of God. Yes. Amen. That's so, let's give Melissa a hand. Thank you, Melissa. For, for Tina and I, when, when we were ordained, we felt very much the same way. We, we felt like it was an important step we were taking, but we weren't really sure where that step was leading and where it was going but how convicted we were that we needed to take that initial step in faith and then allow God to lead the path. Do you feel that way a little bit? Why don't you talk about your ordination? Um, it was just, it was really amazing. And it was just, it's hard to put it into words, but it, it was something I just can't even explain. But you guys know that feeling when you don't, have anything to say. And um, it really moved me too because my brother came and I've been praying for him so much. And he was really um, moved by it and he was super proud of me. And I really, when I changed my life around, I, I had my brother in mind too so that he can be saved too. And just from two, two years ago, he... Uh, God really just changed my life around. It's just a complete 360, and I'm just so thankful. And I'm ready to just see the next step, like Pastor Ken said. You just stay up here. Just stay up here. We've been blessed to know Deanna for the last two, three years since we've been here at Evangel in, in ministry. And oh my goodness, the transformation 
in, in Diana and in her life and what's happening. And, and I feel very strongly that, that this ordination is going to propel you into um, areas and platforms where God's going to use you in a mighty way. Um, and and um, Melissa, I'm going to ask you to come forward real quick again and ask Tina if you would pray over both of them. All right, um, their ordination and that, that God for not only Melissa and Deanna, but Rex as well, that, that there is a path that he's going to light for them in, in their steps. If we can extend a hand out to them. God, I thank you for these beautiful women. Lord, I'm so grateful that they are so willing to serve you, no matter what it looks like or sounds like, that they took those steps and they gave you their yes in obedience. God, I thank you that you bless them supernaturally, that you're going to open doors for them that no one else can open. Lord, I thank you for you say that their steps are ordered because they are righteous. Lord, I thank you. You have a plan for them. Lord, we all come together on their behalf and we say, send them, Father. Send them to the places and the platforms and the ministries and anything that you desire for them, God, that they are open and ready, that they are servants for you, Jesus. They want to be your disciples, ambassadors for you, God, to bring your gospel, your good news into all the world, no matter where they go, Lord, that people will see the light of Christ they will see the compassionate love of Christ and that they will be able to bring people into your kingdom, increasing you and your glory. God, I thank you for, their, for Rex who came together in partnership, Lord. I thank you, Father, that he is a soldier for Christ Jesus. And God, I know that something you've placed on both of their hearts is missionary work, God. And I thank you, Father, for giving them clarity in that walk, God, that you give them dreams and visions, Lord, and bring people into their pathways who are going to invite them. And they'll know, Father, through your spirit of discernment and wisdom to go. In Jesus' name, and God, I thank you for Deanna. And Lord, that her greatest desire, too, is to bring others with her. God, I thank you that she is a young adult and she is a generation, Lord, that she is someone who's going to carry the torch and she's going to lead people to you, Jesus. And they're going to see and hear her testimony. They're going to know that she's been transformed by the blood of Jesus. And God, when she walks into a room, the atmosphere is going to shift. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you, Father, for she is a world changer. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Father. Hopefully, that inspires you, motivates you, Makes you think about ordination. Tina and I, Tina and I, um, I remember I was sitting at our, our kitchen table and Christiana kind of pushed the, the application across the table. It was just, we had just resigned from the University of Louisville and, and it was kind of like, oh, uh, here's yours, right? It was uh, Christiana and um, she was uh, planning on getting ordained. I think Tyler at the time was, was shortly after considered it. Well, here's yours. And, and the first thing that I think was, how, right? Am I worthy? How could I be ordained? And that's what the devil wants you to think. He wants to place in, in us the insecurity, the question. All he needs is your yes, is send me and give him your heart and the willingness to take the steps to be ordained. There is no better time than this to do it. 
There are people in, in uh, the hospitals that the only way you get in to pray for them is being ordained many times. Right? There are so many situations where being ordained will open up some doors. We need more people to be ordained. So I, I highly recommend and, and listen, give both of you a ton of credit for doing it. And just before, we, um, before service today, uh, Usher Bob and I were having our, our, our pre, um, pre-service get together. And we were talking about how, where the Lord has led us in our lives, like from 2015, when the Lord spoke to me in the backyard, what our lives look like. I could have never imagined the steps we've taken and would not change it for anything. Would not change it for anything. All he wants is our yes. Give him your heart. CGI, how powerful it was. We had um, uh, Guillermo uh, Maldonado here, and he he had two services back to back and so powerful. So spirit-filled, the presence of God was here. There were uh, a few things that happened, powerful healings amazing healings that we, we got to witness. Um, one of them was our pastor, Pastor Bob. Did, did, who was here on that night to see Pastor Bob? Did anybody see the video of it? All right, well, let me describe it for you. Pastor Bob was, was sitting in a chair and, and Guillermo Maldonado calls him down. And, and let me start by saying this. He called him down initially because that morning he got a prophetic word for Pastor Bob. And he spoke over Pastor Bob, knowing the man of God he is within not only CGIA and in this church here, but what his life stands for. He knows that. But he spoke over him an anointing of an apostle. And you would think, well, Pastor Bob, he's, he's a, a righteous, good man, a great pastor. What is that about being an apostle that's different? And why would that be important? The anointing of apostle is this. It's, it, if I can relate it to a, a secular, it would be this. It's like a coach. Because an apostle is responsible for disciplining. The apostle is responsible for correcting. The apostle is responsible for rebuking and shaping lives of a church community. When, when we had uh, preseason at the University of Louisville, we had before we started what was called captain's practices, right? So the captains would go out and practice on their own. And we would try before that happened to give them some direction, some idea of what we wanted it to look like. But the first day the coach came into it, oh my goodness, how different it looked. Why? The accountability. The discipline, the correction that took place as soon as the authority came in and held people to a standard. The apostles responsible for shaping the behavior of a church community. Anything that moves us away from God, away from Jesus, are behaviors that need to be stripped from our lives. Let go of. And anything that moves us closer, we need to be reinforced. That's a tough job for an apostle. Why? Because in most church communities, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear the rebuking. They don't want to hear the standard that you need to be living up to. They don't want to know about the discipline. Why do we not hear about too many apostles in the church community? It's a tough position. 
But the one thing I know about Pastor Bob is he speaks the truth. He doesn't back down from what the Bible says. He doesn't back down from what we need to hear. And he doesn't back down in his own life of representing that. I didn't quite understand what the anointing meant. So I had to go find out. And what I found out is I'm thankful that he spoke that into Pastor Bob's life, not because he isn't that kind of a man, but we need that kind of anointing in our churches. Listen, what the apostle does is he prepares the bride in a way to be worthy of Jesus. You, you know, that was happening for a while in, in families. It was the responsibility of parents to, to shape the behaviors of their kids. But I spoke, I spoke to my mom just recently, just recently, and she said, you know, Ken, I worry a little bit about my great-grandkids. And will they ever know Jesus why is she concerned? Well, it's be concerned because the parents are not shaping their lives in that way. We need apostles, especially now because of what's going on in our world. We need people that are willing to step out and shape the behaviors of our church to make sure we're ready as a bride for when Jesus comes back. Many missed that aspect of it. Many missed what he spoke over, over Pastor Bob. Why? Because what happened next was incredible. In a moment, the hip problems that Pastor Bob has had for years because of an injury where he was riding a bike and in the accident, his, his foot turned backwards. And in that, he had pins and, and screws in his foot. But because of that, his hip was out of place. And because of that, his back and sciatica, he hadn't run for years. But in a moment, the Holy Spirit touched him, went back. He said, get him up again. Again, the Holy Spirit hit him. He got up and Pastor Bob started running, running up and down the steps, up and down the steps. He started running and then he turns and he starts running around the whole church, following a, a big portion of the congregation, following him. Guillermo Amaldonado possibly says, everybody now, give Pastor Bob a hug. And I pay, hug Pastor Bob. He says, listen, if I wasn't so out of shape, I would have taken another lap. He felt that good. He says, I feel 10 years younger. It was incredible. And listen, to witness the healing, a miracle like that, just for anybody in our congregation to witness it for Pastor Bob. Oh my, to be here and to see the joy on his face. It was real. You cannot deny the presence of God. You cannot deny the goodness of God. And listen, I've known what Pastor Bob has gone through. I've had conversations about it with him. But I got to tell you my favorite part. It was awesome to see Pastor Bob. But the energy I got from watching Miss Teresa, and I think we have a, a video of this right now. You can kind of watch this. She couldn't even pet down. God has totally created. Wait, wait a minute. I can't hear you. Tell me again. She had two fake hips. She could not have hips. done that. Two fake hips. Two fake hips. She's 
said that the power of God came upon her. She says that they're missing, that whatever was missing is replaced. And the movement that she couldn't do, the movement that she yeah. couldn't have, do what she couldn't do. My God, I feel the power of God. God, what is happening? Uh, 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 I've got my hips back. She got the two hips back. How many years? Five years. No more medals. No more medals. Look, yeah. No more medals. She couldn't do that. She couldn't bend down. She couldn't move. Let her talk. Let her talk. I couldn't do that. I'm sorry. No, it rejoice. You don't have to be sorry. <laughs> Five years. Jesus. Five years. Let her talk. Five years. Five years. Five years. I had two fake hips, and I would make the sarns go off everywhere too. <laughs> Not anymore. Not if I'm going down to go, I'm gonna fly somewhere. Yes. So that I can go through the machines to show that it I can't breathe. Ah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Can you put your hands together? I said, can you put your hands together? Look, look at me, daughter. Look at me. Oh God. Hey. Let's let's give a hand again. How awesome is Miss Teresa? You got to come. You got to come up. Come on up. Come on. Come on up and just give us a, a little bit of a word. Oh my goodness. Well, because I was so filled. I mean, God was. Um, it was just. Come on, just just face them and tell so us. Good. He is just so good and faithful. I, whenever he said, "Does anybody have a medal?" and they want it gone. I just started running up there, and I think going up there, he was healing me, because I was just like, oh, because I mean, I just could not, I was just, it, oh, God is so good, and I'm so goofy, but looky, <laughs> let me tell y'all something, I don't know if I can do it real good, because my legs are not strengthened, because I couldn't do it, I, when she said I couldn't do this, but I could always do that, I just couldn't do this, I couldn't get down like the, like, I, I want to get down and get near my grandkids' face. I'm just so thankful that I can do that now. I just need a strength to know. Somebody tell me some extra. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mom. It was so good. <laughs> And she comes down off of the stage, and it was just a continuing of bouncing and running and bouncing. Oh, my goodness. And, and we got caught up in it. The Spirit of the Lord. We were just overwhelmed with it. And, and man, I'll tell you what, if, if you ever want to feel good, I told this to, to Tina and Christiana, man, I, there's nothing like watching in front of you, like real time. The, the, the demonstration of God's love, seeing that. There's nothing like that. There's no place I'd rather be than to witness that. And, and in a moment, in a moment, I can only imagine what it was like to live during the time of Jesus where he had such compassion and touching people in a way and delivering them of whatever it was that was keeping them bound. Oh my goodness, what an what a incredible night it was. And then Christiana gets called up, and I'll, I'll end with this one. Christiana, they, they said, anybody have missing organs? And Christiana's sitting in the front, and, and right, she goes like this right away. And we're like, I'm thinking, what organs? And then she, she, she asked right away, what is it? What organs? When she was um, two years old, she had a condition called intussusception. And it's where the, the intestines go inside of each other. And what happens is it clogs it when it goes inside that they can't move their bowels. 
So, so what they have to do is go in and, and many times they have to relieve it, but they also then have to take some of the intestine out, which they did with her. So she raised her hand and she was one of the ones that got touched that night. And, and she said, and I'll, I'll let you come on up and you can say it, but she felt within her abdomen, movement, growth. So, um, like my dad said, when he called out and when he called out organs, uh, we've had how many ministers come through here and, and talk about, you know, if you need healing, come up for healing, or if you need, you know, if you're missing something. And I just never, I like never remembered it, but it was like in that moment, the Holy Spirit reminded me when he said, anybody need organs, I just heard intestine and my hand went up without me even like realizing it. Um, but I felt after I said it to him, I felt movement in my stomach, kind of like as the night was going on and as he was preaching. And I was just by faith claiming it like, God, thank you, because you're not, God's not going to remind me of something and then not do it. So I was just by faith the whole night. But then he called everybody up again. So we came and we stand, stood up in this row and, this, um, and he was praying for us. And then his team came forward and prayed for us. And the lady that prayed for me, she, she came and she put her hand on my stomach like this. And when she did, I felt something like shoot into my stomach. And I was like, oh my gosh. And so after she got done praying, she's like, what did you feel? And I was telling her, she's like, well, why don't you go up and testify? And I was laughing so hard. I couldn't move. Like, she was like, come on, let's go. And I was like, wait a second. Like I couldn't move. Cause I was just so kind of like Miss Teresa, just so joyful. And even the next day, like my stomach felt different um, the next morning. So I was just so thankful. I thought that was so cool. Yeah. So uh, Pastor Dondra and, and Pastor Jason comes up and Pastor Dondra, um, be, because of uh, precancerous cells many years ago, had her uterus taken out. So he prayed over her and then prophesied in the next 45 days. Yes. Oh my goodness. That's right. In the next 45 days, because she said, listen, we've always wanted to have our own child. In the next 45. So we're already praising, praising the Lord. Picking out names as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, and one of, it wasn't, it wasn't just, it wasn't just the healings because his preachings, Maldonado's preachings were so powerful, so good. He, he talked about the supernatural. And obviously you can understand leading into the healings that happened. He talked about the supernatural. He said it, it is actually Satan's master plan to reduce man back to the natural, the natural being. You think about that for a second. It's Satan's master plan to reduce us back to the natural being, not the supernatural. He said, God's a supernatural being. We know that numbers uh, 23, 19. God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and not then act? Does he, does he promise and not fulfill? Above and beyond the natural. He's, he said this, he said, too often we pacify people's needs in the natural rather than meeting their needs in the supernatural. So many times we pacify. We allow them to live their life with an infirmity. Something that's buying. We, we just pacify it. Rather than in the supernatural meeting the needs and delivering them of it. There's a difference between going through life, surviving it with hips that you get through the day. There's another where you are renewed to the point where guess what? You can see your little granddaughter in the eye. Big difference. Reason. Too many times, he said, we use reason to solve whatever the situation and circumstance. He says, reason is the guillotine of our faith. Reason is the death of our faith. 
that we allow the natural to reason through something and prevent us from receiving through the supernatural what our faith will deliver. He said, faith is the ability given to us by God to live beyond the laws of nature, to live beyond our circumstances. Faith will produce supernatural activity. It's the starting point, faith. We need, we need the, the message tonight talks about of opening up the windows of faith in our life. There was a Thursday, two Thursdays ago, Elijah and I are out in a, behind our, our home. Uh, we have a basketball hoop. Why? Well, we now have three guys that shoot a few baskets. So we were blessed. We actually blessed. Our neighbor actually blessed us with this basketball hoop. They see all these guys coming in and out and going into the car. And he said, well, we had this. And so it's out in the back behind us. We live in, in Norton Commons, and, and the houses are, are probably about two steps apart. Everything's pretty close out there. So, so our neighbor was pretty aware that these guys were, were, were now part of our family. So they blessed us with the hoops. So we were out there shooting hoops, and, and our neighbor comes out on a Thursday. And he says to him, in the middle of shooting hoops with, with Elijah, he says, hey, I got a question for you. And I said, yeah, what's going on? He said, do you guys have a Bible study at your house? And I was like, yeah, yes, we do. Every Wednesday, we have it at six o'clock at our house. He says, I'd like to come. I said, well, awesome. We'd love to have you. I'll make sure I'll remind you before our next one this Wednesday. But man, six o'clock, come on over. We have a little bit of food. Can I bring everything? He said, no, don't bring any. Just come on over. We'd love to have you. And, and you, you think about divine timing of things. Like how that happens. Like Thursday, I'm starting to think back. Like how does this happen? Right? Just today that he decides God's timing on it. And then I think back to the night before. We had word up on Wednesday. And it was, it was one of those nights, the temperature rise right now, the evenings, I love the evenings because it's right about like 60, 70 degrees. You can open the windows. So guess what? Our word up, we opened the windows. And guess what was flowing out of the windows? Worship. All of us singing. Guess what was flowing out of the windows? Intercessive prayer for people, all collective together. Guess what was flowing out of the windows? A strong message. What was flowing out of the windows? Testimonies. And you see, we're only about two steps apart. And the Lord convicted me. And he said, where in your life have you closed the windows? Where in your life, in your daily walk, that you've kept the windows closed and not let my worship, my praise, my prayers, my testimonies to go out from your home into the world so that people can hear it. Where have you kept it closed? How about all those people that I wanted to hear and you shut the window? How many times that you've pulled up to a corner and kept your window down and not opened it to speak into somebody's life? How many times at work 
that we're worried about somebody hearing the praise and worship. We close the window. When we go to the store, he said, how many times while you're waiting in line, you close the window? He convicted me. He said, open your window. But he also said, because out of that will not only flow my power, my presence. But listen, it's attached to your blessing. It's attached to your promise. That by faith that you open that window. Now by faith, you tap into the supernatural. In 2 Kings 13, if you want to follow me, if you have your, your Bible. We're going to start in, in verse 14. And this was at the end of a, uh, the prophet Elisha's life. And he's talking to um, the, the king. And he starting in 14, he says, Elisha had become sick with the illness of which he, he would die. Then Joash, the king of Israel, came down to him and wept over his face and said, Oh, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and their horsemen. And Elijah said to him, Take a bow and some arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, put your hand on the bow. So he put his hand on it and Elisha put his hands on the king's hand. And then he said, open, open the east window. Open the east window. And he opened it. Then Elijah said, shoot. And he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For you must strike the Syrians at Aphek till you have destroyed them. Then he said, take the arrows. So he took them and he said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. So he struck three times and stopped. And the man of God was angry with him. And he said, you should have struck five or six times then you would have struck Syria till you have destroyed it. But now you will strike Syria only three times. The act of opening the window. It was a prophetic act. He asked him, in those days there was no glass. What it was was likely shutters, right? And the shutters were closed. Why were the shutters closed? Well, likely for some kind of protection, maybe. Maybe against the elements. Maybe it was also hiding. Likely a sign with the windows being closed. An indication, at least for the king, that the power inside was not as strong as the power outside. He didn't have faith in the power that existed inside. But the prophet said, open the windows. Open the windows to your future. Have faith. Open the windows to the promise that is coming. By faith, open the windows. 
And with the first arrow that he shot out, it was an arrow of victory. He shot the first arrow and it was a sign of victory over Syria in a, in a battle. And then he said, go back in and take your arrows and, and touch them to the ground. And what he was saying was this. Many people think touch them to the ground. Maybe he was just taking the arrows out and touching. No, that wasn't it. He needed to take the arrows out and shoot them out the window so that they touched the ground. And he took three. He took three arrows. What we know is this, is that he had at least five or six. But he kept two or three. Why? After shooting three, he might as well shut the window after the first three, might as well have just closed the window tight again. Because even though he had the arrows in his bag, he wasn't willing to keep the window open. He was done shooting the arrows. Why? He was... He was likely didn't want to let them go for security reasons. Holding on to what man could do and not allowing the supernatural by faith to let go of what we have and release it, open up the windows. we can probably all relate in some way that we're holding on to something. I think about that. What is it that we're holding on to that we're not releasing? That we shut the window to the promises and blessings in our life because we don't have the faith to release it. Elijah said, hey, You had the choice. You had the chance. Rarely do promises come apart from our participation. The Lord is asking us by faith to participate, to open up the windows. Listen, we, we, we go to high school, right? And, and what they promise is this. At the end of your high school, as long as you go to the class, as long as you do the work, guess what? At the end of it, there is going to be a degree. By your participation, the reward comes. You buy a toaster at the store, and they say, hey, listen, this will produce toast. You bring it home, but nonetheless, you plug it in. Unless you put toast in it. Unless you turn it on, there's no toast coming. It's by our participation. There's a promise of it coming. But we have to believe and participate in a way of expectation. It is our participation in it that is critical. What keeps us, what keeps us? Fear. Fear. Shut the door. Shut the window. Fear. Listen, even you think about the pandemic. Uh, Brian Gibson was talking about how many churches closed down because of the pandemic. They closed their windows. Because of the pandemic, the government said, so shut down, close down, don't open. And there are a number of them that still aren't open today, still have their windows closed. I'm so thankful for Pastor Bob. 
I'm so thankful for his leadership. And we talked about this earlier. Having guys like Guillermo Maldonado here, guys that are coming in, Jesse Duplantis, all the people, Brian Gibson here, all these people that come in and bless us. It is because of Pastor Bob. I'm so thankful of not only his associations, but his willingness to bring them and share them, put them in front of us. Brian Gibson was talking about that Satan is going after two things. One, our families, and two, the church. Those are the key areas. Trying to destroy the family unit, and then destroy the church because he knows those two things have the greatest power to push back his agenda. Fear. Closing the doors. Closing the windows. I'm going to read from, from Daniel 6. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom and over these three governors of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give account to them so that the king would suffer no loss. Then this, this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and the satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. So the idea now is this, is he is, he's a, one, he's a foreigner, but two is this, he has distinguished himself so much, so well, that the king is thinking about putting him in charge of everything. So now these governors are a little bit upset about this. They don't like it because he has distinguished himself so. So the governors and the satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no charge or fault because he was faithful. Because he was faithful, nor was there any error or fault found in him. Then these men said, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Basically saying, listen, he is so faithful. Our only chance is to hold that against him. Could they do the same for us? Would they say the same about us? That listen, the only way we can find charge. is to just show how faithful they are to the Lord. What a statement that is about Daniel. So these governors and the satraps thronged before the king and said to thus to him, King Darius, live forever. All the governors of the kingdom, the administrators and the satraps, the counselors and advisors have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whoever petitions any god or man for 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing so that it cannot be changed according to the law of Medes and Persians, which does not alter. Therefore, King Darius signed the written decree. No worship, no prayer unless you're praising the king. Fear. They wanted to invoke fear. Stay away from the window, basically. Don't go near the window. And what does Daniel do? Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room with his windows open towards Jerusalem. He knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God. 
as was his custom since early days. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and make, making supplication before his God. And they went before the king and spoke concerning the king's decree. Have you not signed a decree that every man who petitions any God or man within 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? He didn't submit to man. He stayed faithful, opened up the window, and proclaimed God's goodness. It didn't stop who he was. In our lives where we go, what decree, what fear, what worry keeps us from opening our windows where we're at? The message today is wherever you are, we need to have our windows open. We need to be proclaiming the goodness of God. Whether it's at school, whether it's at work, whether it's in in the shopping, the grocery store, driving in the car. Where is it that we need to open our windows and make sure that the world knows about Jesus Christ? Fear. Fear wants us to close the windows. What will they think? What will they say? Will I be ostracized? Will I be separated out? Will I no longer fit in? What fears keep us from shut? Keep it shut. Listen, the Lord also convicted me of this as well. Of how many times in the house, right? Because of what's going on inside the house. That we don't want the windows open. Get your house in order, he said. Make sure your house is in order. So that when you do go out, you can have the windows open and not. Be concerned because what's coming out of the windows will be a good representation of who I am. Get your house in order. Live in such a way that you know what? The shades are up and the windows are open because you are representing me all the time righteously. And I go back to where I started with Pastor Bob. That's why we need an apostle to hold us accountable to that. That we live our lives in a way convicted wherever we are. I give that definition. I might have done it already here. Integrity, the definition of integrity. We have our smallest sphere of influence in our lives, which are our family. People that were dearly close to it's a small group, though, a small circle, a bigger circle outside of that is our very close friends, our intimate friends. We have more of those. Bigger than that are acquaintances, people we see on a regular basis, maybe not so close to. And the biggest circle is the public. Here is integrity. Regardless of what circle we're in. We're acting and speaking the same way. Our behavior is the same. We don't have to look over our shoulder to see who's around before we speak. Do we worry about lifting it up because people might hear what's playing out of our our phone music wise? Do we have to look over our shoulder when we're on social media to see who's around? Get your house in order so wherever you go, the windows can be open. 
We need the windows open. We need a, a community, a church that has the windows open, that are disciples in every area of their life that are willing to proclaim, to speak, to introduce our Savior, Jesus, to others. That man showed up at our Bible study. He was there this past Wednesday. We hope he's coming back again. But he got the invitation because our windows were open. Who's getting your invitation? Where are you tomorrow, later tonight, this week, that somebody is getting the invitation simply because you've kept the windows open? Listen, this place should double next week. We should have twice as many next week because your windows are open. Invite them to come with you. Let's have each one reach one. So next week, we know the windows are open. If we could, let's, let's stand to our feet. And as we, as we always do, I'm going to ask this, is that, that we come as Christiana plays and, and sings tonight, that we come to the altar. We come and, and, and Lord with a conviction this week, Lord, wherever we go, whatever we're doing, Lord, that our windows are open, our one, our house is in order, Lord. And with that, we open our windows to you. Come to the altar. Come on. Seer. He's battling 
in his knee to what they what what man would call jumper's knee because he jumps quite a bit but the Lord would call it healed in Jesus name this knee this one. Heavenly Father Lord Jesus before I even laid hands on him he was healed Heavenly Father he's healed Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus and I believe that and this church believes that Seer believes that he's healed in the name of Jesus so he is healed Heavenly Father I thank you Lord Jesus that you are touching his knee that you are doing the work in his knee Lord Jesus you receive the glory for all the healing in his knee right now his knee is healed in the name of Jesus it is not our power Lord Jesus your power it is your job to heal Heavenly Father you are a healer Heavenly Father We rebuke Jumper's knee. He'll be strong. He'll be athletic. He'll be at full capacity to play at his best. We we put down Jumper's knee, and he will soar high, Heavenly Father. So we declare that his knee is healed in your precious son's name. We declare the blood over Seer in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we want a complete healing, Lord. Lord, we want a complete healing, Lord Jesus. I pray that his knee is healed right now, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for his healing. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed. In the name of Jesus, knee be healed. Knee be healed. In the name of Jesus, knee be healed. Check your knee. Do something that you couldn't do before, or Could you not bend? It hurt. It doesn't hurt anymore. It doesn't hurt. Amen. Amen. You can, you can bend. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Amen. 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 We're gonna we're gonna pray for um, uh, John's son uh, Carson. We're gonna pray uh, for him. He experienced um, an injury while he's a, he's, first of all, his son is an exceptional football kicker, exceptional. He's a sophomore uh, being recruited by Alabama, being recruited by uh, Louisville, uh, Florida State, uh, some of the big schools. And he, he was non-contact, uh, went over a hurdle, uh, hurt his knee, and uh, the doctor uh, said he's going to need some surgery. So what I'm going to ask is, uh, Dylan, if you can if you can pray for him, we're going to lay hands on John. John, if you can come on, just step forward here. If we can lay hands on John as Dylan prays, and we're expecting a, a, a miracle for his son Carson. Father God, thank you for thank you for John standing in place, Lord. As Pastor Kim was talking, I started getting the story of where there's a father coming to Jesus he said if you can help my son and Jesus said if I can this I can do and right now I'm speaking and the father says this I yes I believe but help me with my unbelief 
Father God, right now, I pray the healing miracle over, over John's son in the name of Jesus. Father God, right now, let there be strength and nourishment to his body in the name of Jesus. Father God, there will be no weakness in the name of Jesus. Father God, right now, I pray your spirit will come upon him right now. Will you say your Holy Spirit covers our weaknesses? Father God, right now, I call strength in his body in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. First and foremost, when football goes away, it's on you that he will lead. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She's also hurt her knee. She's in Destin, Florida, right now. She hit it up against, I guess, the mattress. Christiana, can you come down here? Uh, the Lord's telling me uh, to have you pray for Melissa's mom. She's battling um, mostly knee, right knee? Uh, I'm not sure which okay. knee it is. Okay, we're going to touch both of your knees then. Uh, knees and then also experiencing some symptoms some as well. Headache, um, right. mom. Yeah, she's and having her? different... Donna. Donna. Uh -huh. So it was her... Say it one more time. The, the symptoms and what was the other one? Her knees. Okay. Yeah, and migraine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we just lift Donna up to you tonight, God. Father, we thank you for Melissa, God, who's standing in the gap for her mom. God, we know that in the Bible, we saw the centurion who came to Jesus. And Jesus said, let it be according to your faith that your yes. servant is healed. God, I thank you that even if Melissa's mom does not have the faith for her healing right now, God, you have sent Melissa on her behalf. God, and I thank you that you're gonna honor her faith, God, to heal her mom in Jesus' name. 
God, we curse all symptoms. We curse all sickness in Jesus' name. We command it to go in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for total healing for her bones, for her joints in Jesus' name. God, I curse all infirmity, God. I curse anything that's happening because of older age. God, I just thank you that you said, God, in your word that we can live to be a good old age, God, to be healthy and strong. So God, we speak health into her body and we speak strength into her bones in Jesus' name. God, I thank you that all these things that are coming because of aging, God, we command them to be reversed right now in Jesus' name. God, we command healthy and long life over Melissa's mom, Donna, in the name of Jesus. God, I just thank you for your hand of blessing and healing. And God, I thank you that it's going to be a sign under her, God, of your mercy and grace in her life in the name of Jesus. God, your word says that when healing comes, salvation comes as well. So God, I thank you that this healing, God, would bring a deliverance as well for Melissa's mom, God, that it would bring a salvation, God, that it would bring, God, a, an intimacy with you unlike she's had before in Jesus' name. God, I thank you for this work that you're doing. God, I thank you that your word says that you watch your word to be performed. God, I thank you that you're watching over this word for it to be performed, God, that won't, that it won't return void, God, but that'll produce what you've called it to produce in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Okay. All right. Johnny, can you, can you pray for Seth and his knees right now? Would you do that? And uh, what I want is, uh, uh, Ben, if you can touch one of his knees, sear the other one. All right. Um, to have a father, we came into you right now, Father God. Um, she knows Seth, Father God. You know it's hard. She know what you call him to do with you. And you know everything that is going through, Father God. You know his body, as well as any doctor can know, Father God. You know from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. And you know every single part of his body that he has been battling, Father God. We, pray, we, we are praying and asking by faith that you heal his knees. You heal every single part of his body that... He's in pain, Father God, in Jesus' name. We trust in you. We believe in you. We are asking for a complete healing. We're asking you, Father God, for another testimony that will come and that will open windows for other people to come and believe in for miracle and healing. We trust you, Father God. Thank you for this healing and another testimony that you're bringing, you're bringing here. We love you. We believe in you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.
Bob, we're going to pray over you. You have a scope this week that's going to get a good report back, right? So we're just, we're going to pray over you right now. Lord, we thank you for Bob's servant heart, Lord. We, we thank you for his obedience, Lord, that he, he's willing to, to each and every day, Lord, step into the calling upon his life, Lord. Lord, I declare his latter days are better than his, his earlier days, Lord. Lord, I thank you for the for the perfect report, not good report, perfect report that they're going to receive this week from the scope, Lord. Lord, he has been healed in Jesus' name, Lord. Every cell in his body is in perfect harmony, Lord. Lord, we thank you that he is going to be not only renewed, restored, but there is going to be more strength, more vitality than before, Lord. I thank you how you're using him in a mighty way, Lord. And I thank you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Would you, would you pray for him, Bob? Praise you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we gather around David in the name of Jesus, and we come against any doubting, foul spirit that would come against him in the name of Jesus. Generational curses are broke here tonight, not only off of him, but everybody here in Jesus' name. Spirit of fear, you cannot be here. Only a spirit of love and a power and a sound mind is in our brother. Lord, renew his spirit. Renew his mind, Lord. Renew him with the word of God. Give him the Holy Spirit. Give him the assurance that you have his back, that you've got him coming and going in Jesus' name. Just touch him, Lord. Anything, any doubt, any fear the enemy tries to throw at him, Lord, may he just laugh. May he just laugh at the enemy in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, take complete control of him in Jesus' name. And let him be able to minister to others as you minister to him. Let him be the man of God that you call him to be. Let him continue to grow in, in his faith walk, Lord, with you. Let him realize that he is the man of God that you're calling him to be. Now, Father, we bless you. We come against the enemy in every way that he would come against our brother. We command it never again to touch him. Never again. Never again. Never again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There's no question that Lord's hand is upon your life. If you look at where you've been and how you've gotten to the point you are right now, there is no question. And the Lord says, use that testimony. Because he's been walking with you every step of the way. Trust in that. And he will continue to because of your heart. Trust in that. Trust in that. a shout.
thank you that we have authority over every tormenting spirit that brings pain. I bind every tormenting spirit off her now. I command every spirit that tries to come to still kill and destroy, to give her thoughts that are not from God, to cause pain and discomfort. Loose her in the name of Jesus. God, you say whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. I loose the healing power of God over you to touch you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Every spirit that would try to restrict and cause pain, I uproot it and I take it captive now in the name of Jesus. Lose her. I speak peace to take the place of that pain. In Jesus' name, go. Go now in Jesus' name. Come up and out now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father. Yes, peace. Peace in the name of Jesus. Peace in the name of Jesus. Peace. I speak peace in the name of Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. God, I speak life over her in the name of Jesus. I bind every spirit that would try to bring death to truths about who you are in Christ Jesus. Yes, God, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Father, for you are the author and finisher of her faith. And you remind her she is fearfully and wonderfully made. He knows every hair on your head and he will never leave you nor forsake you. There's nothing, nothing you can do that separates you from the love of the Father. Thank you, Father. Receive it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it all. Receive it all in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, consume her. Consume her. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Peace. Peace that passes all understanding. Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Shalom. Out of her belly now. Flows living waters. All pain, go now. All pain, lose her now. All pain, go now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. All spirits of defilement, go now. In the name of Jesus. All doubt and unbelief, go. In the name of Jesus.
treasures you. He, you're his daughter. You are his daughter, his royal priesthood, fearfully and wonderfully made in his image and likeness. Greater is he who's in you than he who is in the world. I thank you, Father, for reminding her. Renew her mind, Father. Renew her mind with truths that will set her free. For he is the way, the truth, and the life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Peace. Peace. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Just say Jesus. Yes. How are you feeling? social time now we go with a shout one two three jesus jesus jesus